We're now going to scan for the erector spiny plane block. I'm now using a high frequency linear probe and I've placed it laterally on the chest wall, taking a para, uh, paramedian sagittal slice through the posterior aspect of the thorax. Um, the left hand side of the screen is cephalad, the right hand side of the screen is cordad, and I'm far out away from the midline that I know that any bright white hyperechoic lines with a dropout artifact below them such as the one that you can see right in the center of the screen is likely to be a cross section of a rib. Uh, if you look deep to the rib and if I ask our model to take a couple of deep breaths in and out you'll see a glistening white line there of the pleura. So breathe away normally, thank you. So we've got a rib here, another rib here and a rib here. So we've got three ribs on the screen. I'm going to focus on that one in the center um, if we start at the top of the screen, we've got a very small amount of adipose tissue and then we've got a couple of muscles. The most superior or superficial muscle is the trapezius and deep to that will be the rhomboid. And now I'm going to slide from lateral towards the midline. As I slide towards the midline, you're going to notice that there's a muscle bulk that becomes more and more evident. It's just starting to come in now. It's a thick muscle that's developing here. And you'll also notice that that bright white structure that we call the rib has changed in its morphology. So right in the center of the screen now, that is a, now a transverse process. So I'm going to show you that again. I'm going to move laterally. Watch the transverse process, that bony outline, it changes. So now we're scanning over a rib. So this is really important when performing an erector spiny plane block. To orientate yourself, you need to be at the point where a rib actually meets the transverse process. So as we slide medially again, the ribs dive down. There's a thick muscle becoming evident and now we've now met the transverse process. So we've now got a transverse process on the screen. We've got a muscle bulk above and below. And as I slide up and down, it's important I get at least two transverse processes on the screen. So hopefully now you can see two very sort of rectangular shaped bones uh, and then a thick muscle bulk immediately above them. So that thick muscle bulk is the erector spiny group of muscles. And in order to perform an erector spiny plane block, you can either approach from the cordad aspect or from the cephalad aspect. So coming in from the top of the probe, so either below or above. And the idea is to deposit local anesthetic just between the erector spiny muscle and the fascia below it, just above the transverse processes. If you look carefully at the lower aspect of the screen, at about the three three and three uh, and three and three quarter centimeter level, you can just see the pleura glistening. So one of the mechanisms of action of the erector spinae plane block is that potentially local anesthetic that is deposited on that surface above the transverse processes will traverse that, that, that thick fascia and penetrate into the paravertebral space. So again, I'll show you coming laterally. We're going to start off laterally here. We've got ribs and three muscles. The muscles above are the trapezius, the rhomboid muscle, and as we come towards the midline, you're going to see the erector spinae muscle starting to develop, and it's a group of three muscles. And there is that thick erector spinae muscle now become very evident. And as I slide up and down the back, you can see that's a consistent endpoint. And the aim is for you to identify two transverse processes, and we're going to aim to deposit local anesthetic between the transverse processes and the fascia. And that's quite a nice view there of that thick fascia. You would aim, if you were going to come from the cordial aspect here, you'd aim to come from the lower part of the probe and aim to hit just before the transverse process and lift that muscle up off the transverse processes. Um, the, the problem with the fascia is it's not a thin, it's not a, a specific line, there are multi components of the fascia. So sometimes you can end up splitting the fascia. So as you're scanning from ribs towards the transverse process, get a nice view of two transverse processes. If you aim for the corner of the transverse process there, you can often lift that muscle off the transverse process in a very effective manner. If you're unsure, you can bring your needle in and make contact with the bone and then withdraw your needle ever so slightly. But so to perform an erector spiny plane block, you need to get two transverse processes on the screen and inject local anesthetic between the transverse processes and the uh, erector spiny muscle above. Usually a volume of between 20 to 30 milliliters will give you hopefully hemithorax analgesia on the side that you're blocking. So we look at this image here on the screen, you've got adipose, the trapezius, a very thin rhomboid, and then the erector spiny muscle deep to it. You've got one transverse process, another transverse process, the pleura just visible over here. So if you were to bring your needle in either from this direction or from this direction, the idea is to lift this fascia over here up 
off the transverse processes. So you bring your needle in from one side, you can aim for one side of the transverse process or the other, and as you inject local anesthetic, you get a very classical black stripe appearing on the screen, lifting that muscle off the transverse processes.